Um, thank you for inviting me, Steve. Uh, I'm really glad to be in here. Um, unlike most of um, uh, the panels in here who are from UCSD, I'm actually from SDSU, the other campus on the other side of San Diego. And I'm from the Graduate School of Public Health, and um, uh, I'll be talking about fine particle, uh, partic particular matter in South Asia. Um, I do want to mention in here that uh, I started working in South Asia as a first year graduate student. And Ram actually invited me uh, to his Indux project uh, uh, when I was measuring at the SIO pier uh, air pollution at the SIO pier. So, um, and since then, I kept on working in South Asia on and off. <clears throat> so, uh, what are fine particles? Fine particles essentially are um, uh, particles that have a diameter of 2.5 micrometer or lower, and uh, uh, they are suspended in the air. And the chemical makeups are made of sulfates, nitrates, organic, soot, ammonium, metal. So qu a quite complex chemical mixture, uh, these fine particles. Uh, they do stay in the air for a long period of time, several hours to several days. And as a result, they can be transported uh, for hundreds of miles. And uh, uh, as many of you mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, uh, short-lived climate pollutant, this fine particle, are shortly climate pollutants. And uh, uh, they can either cause warming or cooling. Uh, the soot or black carbon causes warming, and sulfates or organic, which are part of fine particles, they may cause cooling. Um, so where do these fine particles come from? Uh, this fine particle can either be directly emitted from various sources or uh, converted from gas to particle, and these are known as secondary particle. And if they're directly emitted, they are primary particles. Uh, in terms of major sources, uh, uh, natural sources are essentially uh, all types of combustion, so wildfire, vol volcanic eruptions, as well as uh, uh, marine sources. And anthropogenic uh, source-wise, vehicle emission, industrial emission, fire smoke, tobacco smoke, cooking, uh, burning of fuel, and vegetation, all of these are major sources of fine particle matter. In terms of health effects, uh, they do cause severe health effects. In general, the smaller these particles are, the deeper they go and more damaging uh, they can cause to, to the human system. And so depending on site, they deposit a different uh, part of the body. So larger particle, they would typically deposit at the upper airways. And smaller particle, the fine particle, what we are calling the PM 2.5 uh, micrometer lower, they go deeper into the lung system and into the alveolar. And this also shows in terms of particle diameter, uh, uh, what fraction of those particles deposit in what part of the respiratory system. They can cause uh, uh, eye, nose, throat, or lung irritation, as well as coughing, sneezing, runny nose, and shortness of breath. Uh, in addition uh, to pulmonary diseases, uh, also heart diseases uh, uh, are exacerbated uh, with uh, exposure to fine particles. And infants and elderly people are, are at particular risk. So uh, my focus is in South Asia, uh, and the uh, present situation in South Asia, essentially, uh, uh, South Asia is experiencing extremely high level of, of PM uh, pollution, as the satellite images show. Uh, as a result, uh, it causes severe health effects and as well as visibility problem. And the main issue is particulate matter in South Asia. Um, uh, just to give a quick uh, analogy uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with fine particle, uh, US EPA fine uh, particle annual standard. So these are, this, is, this is the concentration of fine particle in the air that is supposed to keep uh, health effects uh, uh, a minimum. Uh, it's 15 microgram per meter cube. Uh, WHO has much, uh, a much lower standard uh, average annually uh, and outdoor. Uh, in San Diego, concentration are lower than, uh, annual, uh, than this annual average, uh, so it's 11.8 from the 2009 report. Uh, in LA, actually, it exceeds the annual standard, 15.2 or so in downtown LA. In Riverside, it's slightly higher, uh, 17.2. Um, and uh, as compared to these values uh, uh, in the US, in South Asia, we are seeing much, much higher values. So this is from one of my studies. 
Chandigarh, it's a, it's a smaller city in the northern part of India, um, and uh, the concentration are almost twice as much as the US standard, so about 29 microgram per meter cube. Uh, in Mumbai, Kolkata, and Delhi, the three bigger mega cities uh, in, the, in South Asia, concentration are much, much higher, where Mumbai is relatively low as compared to Kolkata and Delhi, which are further inland. So this concentration, uh, you can see that they are about five to as much as nine times higher, and obviously they cause severe health and visibility problem in this region. In terms of uh, chemical composition, this is again from some of my past work. Um, um, uh, chemical composition-wise, um, uh, uh, um, they are obviously varied. Uh, in here, I'm showing seasonality of fine particle in some of the cities in, in South Asia. And this is pretty common in all of the cities in South Asia. Uh, you have a low uh, fine particle during the uh, summertime and a much higher concentration of fine particle during the wintertime. And this concentration are in the hundreds. And it's, uh, 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 and it's pretty typical. The main composition is soot, elemental carbon, with a high fraction of organic carbon, as well as crustal oxides and many other uh, chemicals chemical uh, uh, pollutants as, and many other uh, species as well. The reason why um, you have a low uh, um, uh, um, dip in here is because of the rains. Uh, fine particles do tend to be dissolved in uh, uh, rainwater, and uh, uh, that causes so that this is a rain precipitation uh, because of the uh, uh, winter, summer monsoon. And in the winter time, there's very little rain, so fine particle stays in the air and accumulates uh, uh, during the uh, um, winter time. Uh, in terms of sources of fine particle, uh, I've conducted some modeling work uh, using chemical mass balance model uh, to try to quantify uh, sources of fine particle in some of these uh, main mega cities. So here are some, some of the uh, summary results from some of my, uh, my work and some of my colleagues' work in India and Bangladesh. Uh, in here, we are seeing that Delhi and Kolkata, the two cities that have a very high uh, PM 2.5 annual averages, uh, you have a significant secondary particles so essentially gas to particle conversion in the air, uh, right here, so secondary particle. And then uh, you have significant vehicle emission as well as a little bit of industrial emission, but also a big chunk of this fine particle problem is from biomass and biofuel burning. So these are from city level data, but as you go to Bangladesh, more in the smaller towns, you see that biomass contribution increases significantly in, in other parts of uh, uh, the region. Uh, so. Uh, Source-wise is vehicle emission, uh, a little bit of the industrial emission, and industrial emission, a big problem is emission from brick kiln that uh, emits uh, uh, significant, uh, uh, that uses coal as the main fuel uh, and emits uh, uh, soot particle uh, at large quantity, and as well as uh, uh, cook stove emission um, in from rural areas. In terms of uh, quick findings from this study, um, uh, uh, what we realized that from this source apportionment work that in order to control urban air pollution in South Asia, multiple approaches for air quality management is needed uh, in this region because you not only have one single source, you have, you have fossil fuel and biomass burning. Uh, both of them quite dominate in, in, in here. In fact, fossil fuel from uh, some, some of this area, it's about one third uh, to one fourth of uh, PM 2.5 concentration, whereas biomass, it's about uh, one, uh, it's about 10% uh, to 20% depending on where you're looking at. Uh, and in some other areas, it's also even higher. Um, and biomass and coal are typically much higher during the winter time because of heating, also because of poor mixing and atmospheric inversion. Um, and uh, apparently from some of these studies, it shows that in many parts of Bangladesh, biomass contribution is significantly higher uh, than other location. And that led me to, uh, to, to start uh, doing some additional work in Bangladesh. Uh, I started monitoring uh, indoor air pollution in Bangladesh, uh, trying to see what is the chemical composition of indoor air pollution, what are the levels that are experienced in Bangladesh. And uh, uh, to do this, I did a small pilot study uh, in the northern part of Bangladesh near the border of India, uh, where uh, we took a small sample of 40 households. Out of these 40 households, 50%, about 20, had uh, 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 like an improved stove made in Bangladesh, and then another 50% had unimproved stove that was using typical uh, uh, stove used in Bangladesh, which is the traditional mud stove. <coughs> 
and uh, 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 I used some of the very basic tools uh, to monitor PM and also chemical composition. And uh, very briefly in here, uh, the findings uh, uh, were that uh, air pollution indoor were extremely, extremely high, much, much higher than outdoor. It's not unexpected. It's pretty common in all parts of the globe. However, uh, what uh, uh, I see is that the improved stove that was used in many parts of Bangladesh actually did not uh, provide significant uh, reduction of PM 2.5. In fact, the reduction was slightly, uh, 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 but was quite uh, less. And these stoves actually were not brand new stoves. They were in operation in the field for about a year, a year and a half. So uh, it, it sees that the functionality and the effectiveness of some of these improved stoves drop very fast. Uh, and chemical composition-wise, uh, even though the improved stoves is supposed to burn better and uh, have complete combustion of uh, the fuel, leading to less uh, uh, carbon, it shows that actually uh, the shortly pollutant black carbon and organic carbon, they are still being put, uh, emitted significantly from these stoves. And these are concentration in the kitchen uh, where people um, uh, are cooking, mostly women and children. So in summary, uh, ambient condition in South Asia, there is a seasonal trend of PM 2.5 concentration. Uh, it's higher during the winter time, in pretty much in all cities, very unhealthy condition during that time, uh, lower in the summertime. Uh, and uh, contribution-wise, uh, there's a variety of sources. Biomass is one, dust is another, fossil fuel is another. So three major sources of fine particle emission in here. Uh, uh, fossil fuel um, uh, def definitely seems to dominate in some part, in some cities over biomass, whereas in other cities, biomass seems to dominate. Um, and road dust also, it's quite significant during the drier part of, this, uh, of the um, um, of the year. And indoor air pollution wise, cook stoves definitely meet high PM 2.5, and uh, some of the improved stoves being used in this region, also they're not extremely effective, so there is a need to promote uh, uh, good stoves, and uh, I'd be very curious to talk about Ramanathan to see how good those stoves are, uh, and uh, because they do emit significant uh, uh, carbon uh, from the air. And here are my acknowledgments for some of the work uh, that I did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you.